Good evening, everybody. As you know, this weekend we are going to be going into the high profit, uh, uh, consistent money producing uh, signals and patterns, and we're going to do it in a a correlated basis or correlated coordinated basis, where going to start off with the high power signals so that if you're a day trader or even a short-term swing trader, they become the uh, maybe uh, the trading programs you want to use, the trading signals and patterns. If you're more a full-time swing trader, there'll be a batch that make that more uh, uh, more easy to uh, fit into your trading style. And then if you're a longer-term swing trader, meaning two weeks to four weeks, six weeks, there's others that uh, will be good. Uh, Paul, hang on to your individual ones until we get to uh, get to the end. We're going to get to a lot of them. All right, so the first thing that I always – stress when we start any training session is the number one thing that uh, you want to do is see what the market is doing. That's a combination of where are you with stochastics and if you're getting signals. Now, this is where we kind of put all the common sense analysis of uh, of how uh, uh, Investor sentiment works, again, pointed out by the Japanese rice traders through all their observations through 400 years. Nice uptrend, nice uptrend. But what was the warning flag to tell us that we start looking for profit-taking and or selling? The fact that they gapped it up big when stochastics were in the overbought area. That was number one. Number two, if the uh, norm is that if they go through a uh, resistance level, they'll usually come back and uh, test it for to see if it's going to act as support. And then, yes, the uh, doji in the overbought condition, giving us a very simple trading technique or trading uh, truism. Price is usually going to move in the direction of how they open it the next day. So that makes it very easy for us that when we get up the next day and say, see the pre-market futures are lower, we already know which way they're going to be uh, moving the market. That gives us uh, usually the within the last 10 minutes before the market opens, you can see where the pre-market futures are. Gets you to look at your positions pretty quick or during that time frame. And say, oh, I got three, two or three here that look like if they start trading lower, it's time to be out. So you've got a little bit of a head start knowing what's happening because of a candlestick signal. Yes, yeah, so and now you've got a pullback, which did exactly what we suspected it to do. Took the Dow right smack dab to the 50 to see if it's going to act as support or not. So. When it closed back up to the 3T line on Friday, we still had the prospects that if it opened positive, this upward uh, move was still in progress. If it opened lower, it told us that at least they're coming back down to test the 50 again, and more than likely, the buying hasn't started, that uh, you're going to see some more selling. Now, would you expect the selling day to be 600 points? Yeah, expect the selling day to be maybe 100 points or 75 points. But the uh, important factor is analyzing the market first allows you to be in the right positions at the right time. So if we saw we had kind of an evening star signal and the possibility that it's supporting here at the 50, we know what should happen today. If we woke up and the pre-market futures were showing the Dow was going to open up 100, and 100 points, uh, low, Pat, um, that would have told us 
Yeah, they were supported at the 50, uh, consolidated. Now the uptrend is still in progress. The fact that we can see they're opening lower and starting to trade it lower told us that we better watch trying to get out of some of these uh, long positions and start taking profits. So all that is isn't is based upon what do we expect to see happening in the investor sentiment. A big move up in the NASDAQ, a bearish Harami doji, very simple. If it opened positive, it told us they're going to the 50. If it opened lower, it told us the 200 was acting as a resistance level. This isn't rocket science. This is just kind of common sense. And I shouldn't say that. It's kind of much more clear when you can see what's happening after candlestick signals. The doji rule has made me a ton of money through the years just by that simple rule. It's usually going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So how am I going to do this? We still have a few in the portfolio that didn't sell off. MNK still working nicely, that 45 degree. IDT kind of setting up as a J-hook. Uh, fry pan bottom. This one can still be bought on positive trading because that would tell us if they broke out through this level, wave three was in progress. Now, PTI, we closed out today because which direction should this be going after the doji at the end of kind of a wedge formation? It should be trading positive. So what's the worst case scenario if you close it out? Next couple of days, they do something that shows buying. You can always buy back in. But right now, with a close below the T line, the probabilities go against you. So if I see anything that is closing below the T line, now I say closing below the T line, but it closed after kind of a pattern below the T line. If it closed, I'm trying to find something. If it closed, and that's not on here. But let's say it closed right on the T-line. Yeah, give it one more day. But as soon as they close below the T-line, that dramatically improves the probabilities that you could have you, the uh, price could be heading much lower. So if I see something like this, a bearish engulfing, indecisive, indecisive, and then about the third day, they're closing below the T-line. Who's winning after the bearish signal? The bears. And as soon as it closes below the T-line, the probabilities go dramatically against you of any uptrend. Okay, so some of the other ones we got. Yeko held up, but didn't really do anything. N-I-H-D. Still in this uptrend, not showing any real decisive selling. And ONDK still has the potential of a J-hook type pattern. Now, with it closing here, if it doesn't open positive tomorrow, where do you think the next target's going to be? Back here to the T-line, kind of close, corresponding with the, the lows of that big gap up. But the reason this stays on the uh, watch list is, this told you there was a dramatic change of investor sentiment. Now we're just waiting for the, uh, the profit taking to be over. Um, so here's, I'm going to kind of spend a little bit more time in, I wouldn't know what you would call it, just kind of logical analysis based upon knowing what the signals are telling us. First of all, when we start climbing in the overbought area, you start seeing things that show indecision, a hanging man, kind of a dark cloud, a pullback. Took it up one more time. But where did it fail? Right about the same level it topped out before. And then Friday when they sold it off, what did we have? A dark cloud with some selling. Took it back up and failed with an evening star. That's starting to give you the impression, or should give you the impression, that the bulls have run out of steam. You want to start thinking about closing out this position. If you didn't do it on the evening star, um, you get ready to close it out immediately on a lower open like we saw today. 
So just the fact that you could start seeing Hanging Man, Shooting Star, Hanging Man, bearish confirmation. Told you it's time to get out of this trade because the probabilities have now gone against you based upon sell signals occurring up here in the overbought area. All right, so what we're going to be doing, let me go, is this weekend, as I mentioned, we're going to be concentrating on the 15 different, uh, 15, 16 different uh, trade setups that usually produce a high probability return. But there are some people that want to trade fairly active, so they they might want to be looking at the high-powered, fast-moving trades. There's some other people that can't watch the stock or watch the market all day long, so they're going to want things that produce kind of a slower and more steady uh, positive trading. So one of the things that we want to get accustomed to is the belt hold signal and what the aftermath of a belt hold signal uh, provides. We saw that also today. In party, party had a belt hold type signal uh, what was it, Thursday. Now, is that relevant? Well, the market was down 600 points today, and look what this did. This is still an aftermath of the signal. Now, you also want to make sure you're learning what to do with these signals and patterns based upon confirmation. This would be a good situation that if they showed confirmation. If you got in, today you would have gotten out. If you got or looking to get in based upon a positive open, this kept you from getting in. But notice what's not happening just yet. Still haven't really been able to close this below the T line. Remember, the belt hold signal has a very significant piece of information built into it. They've taken out a lot of sellers. This is. So here's another one that if I had bought this up here, what should our what should we be expecting? This type of move. We shouldn't expect it to even want to come back down and close below this level. Now, the reason we're showing the good as well as the bad is you want to learn how to identify the signal and then know what to do with the results of that signal. So not only are you trying to get into positions that are going to move in the right direction. You also know want to know which ones you should be right back out of when they didn't move in the right direction. And so the reason I point this out is if I bought this because I, my expectations were going up and I saw this, I, my first thought would be, oh, man, this was a good signal. Maybe this is just a bad day. I'm going to hold on to it instead of saying, knowing I shouldn't be in it if it came back down through this level, close it out, and be ready to move on to something else. So each time you you learn what should happen, here's a big uh, kind of best friend breakout. You expect a 45 degree. You want to know what the rules should be or what the results should be. This is Procter & Gamble, probably one of the most boring stock in the market. But when it gapped up, doing kind of a kicker breakout, there was a 45 degree. So how long would you hold on to this boring stock? You see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So those type of uh, analysis, this is, there's your best friend on HMHC. What are we looking at right now? Probably at least a 45 degree off of here. So. If I know this should be a 45 degree, and I've become a so-called expert at this type of pattern, I know a lot more concisely, or that the right word, specifically what this should be doing, how long I should stay in, and where I should be getting out. When you have that type of uh, knowledge of your signals, it allows you to work a lot more effectively. Um, yeah, HMHC will probably still be recommended tomorrow on positive trading. Loco, 45 degree. So, again, these are signals and patterns.
that produce high probability results. So you don't, again, I, this is what I'm trying to convey to everybody. You don't have to know 15 different patterns. You just need to know four or five very well. And now what your trading becomes is not, oh, should I be doing this? Or, I don't know, is it too late to buy into this? You don't have to be asking those questions. You know exactly what to do on each each trade. We also, if we can identify bobble patterns, another very high probability trade setup. So if we're looking at something like this, or right here at the breakout level, if this opens positive, we have a high probability expectation of what this bobble breakout should do. Wave one and wave three should be about the same. If they're about the same, what target would there be up here? There's a little gap right here. So anything that we can see that would make a better confirmation of why a price move should move to a specific area, the better off we are. Now, ALGT looked like it was a potential bobble breakout but it didn't break out. So if I had bought this today and it started trading positive and then started coming back down through this level, what should our expectation be of a bobble breakout? That it's going in this direction. You close it out. What's the worst case scenario? It comes down here, comes back up. You can always buy back again. But what I just described there is something that if you're an expert at the bobble breakout pattern, you know exactly what to do, when to get in, when to get out, and maybe when to get back in again. And KTR, is this a decent chart? It's got a little kicker type signal. Now remember, the true kicker does not have a tail to the downside. But you've got kind of a morning star signal, kicker type signal, something to watch. Same scenario, though. Um, would you have closed AGO out as soon as it traded below the – probably, yes. As soon as it came back down through the open. Which one was it? A-L-T. Oh. Yeah, if I bought here and it started coming back down through the open and the 50, yeah, I would have probably closed it out. Uh, CB, hang on to your individual requests until we do the double line. All right, so SGMS, kicker signal. Now, if we had bought it by identifying it early on whatever day that was, we knew that there was one spot that it shouldn't trade, and that's back below the open. Because this is the candle that told us the bulls are in control. They definitely should not be trading it back below the open of the uh, uh, candle that told us the bulls were in control. So something like Etsy also has a nice kicker signal. Traded indecisively, but if it opened lower tomorrow, what it tell us about our bearish Harami? The buying had stopped. Or we're not in a J-hook pattern. We're probably coming back to the T-line. This gives us a little bit more in-depth analysis of what uh, what to be looking for and what what to expect or not expect. Uh, this one uh, again is your kind of your Kicker signal to the downside. Bullish candle opens lower and goes the opposite direction. It did it right at the 50. That's giving you a lot of imp information. Uh, should have also traded off the 10 minute chart on the big up day and next. Uh, yes, you can do that too. Um, and that's something we're going to be going into a little bit more. But if you see a big, oops. Well, shut up. Get it wrong. 
if you're looking to buy, still going up, still going up, look at your 10-minute chart. At least you know if you've got a kicker signal going. If you look at your 10-minute chart and it's not pulling back, it means they're still buying. At least you know there's buying when you're buying, but it's still heading in that direction. Um, we're going to be looking at, well, yeah, I probably won't be getting so much into the monthly charts, uh, Mr. Candles, but it can be, I mean, it's part of that process depending on how long you want to hold on to a position. Now, if you're a long-term investor, yes, you can use the combination of the daily, weekly, and monthly chart. Uh, I'll try to find some. All right, let's go to here real quick using that information uh, on the biggies. You can see once it got up uh, here, we started seeing sell signals. A bearish Harami gap down below the key line. I should have told you. This one wasn't working if he had gone long. Close out the position. That's uh, Labu. Apple, same scenario. Notice what happened as soon as they hit the T line. This is why when you're buying, a lot of people ask, well, should we be buying here? The answer is yes, but watch to see what happens once it gets to the T line. The fact that this opened at the T line and traded lower was a little bit of a warning that Apple wasn't in an uptrend. When they opened it lower the next day, if you'd been long, you should have closed out the position because all the probabilities had now gone against you because of the sell signal at the T line. AMD, another one where if you had held long Friday, it came back up above the uh, above the T-line, so what do we know should happen today to stay long? We need to open positive. If it opened lower, pattern will be setting up. Kind of a bearish doji sandwich, and what do we expect from a bearish doji sandwich? This candle to be bearish, obviously, and then more downside. Upon initial entry, when do you set the stop? Halfway down the entry signal body versus at the bottom? Uh, no, you don't want to see it close below the halfway point. But you don't want to see it during the day trade at all back below the previous day's open. If they've got enough selling pressure during the day to sell back below the previous day's open, pretty much tells you there's not any bullish strength there. Now, if it drifts down and it still closes above the halfway point of the candle that told you the bulls were in control, you stay with it. But at that point, if it closed pretty close to the halfway point, you definitely need to see it open a positive and trade positive the next day. Amazon, Doji, bearish confirmation with it selling off today. And, again, this is a function of seeing the market uh, trading off. Where are you now? You're back below the T-line. What's that tell you about your overall trend? Still in a downward trend. Netflix, same scenario, failure at the 34. Now, a lot of people ask, why do you have the 34 on here? Because occasionally it works as a uh, kind of a natural uh, support and resistance level. But after this signal and a gap down through the T-line, that immediately told you you should be out of this trade and or going short. Now, Tesla, this is why you always have your safety stop. Just below the T-line. Worked well, worked well, worked well, worked well. And then you had a shooting star doji, but you're still above the T-line. When it came back down through the uh, T-line, up three T-line, when it came back down through the T-line, what did it tell you about these signals up here? They were confirming to the sell side. Uh, no, I don't have uh, Goldman because it doesn't trade actively enough. However, you saw what happened Friday with it selling off hard. Now, remember, if you're not trading Goldman or Morgan Stanley or J.P. Morgan, you can still use them as indicators. They're good market indicators. If the, uh, the, 
the financials are selling off, that means the market is probably selling off. Uh, when a bubble breaks out, no, it, it's it's breaking out. That's what the breakout is referring to. Which one did I do? When it breaks out, it should be taking you in this direction. That's the whole point of identifying a bubble breakout. Which one was it that? Oh, ALGT. So if our expectation is it should be breaking out, it shouldn't be closing back below the breakout level. Let's see. Nugget telling you gold is still soft. Notice where your left-right combo occurred. This is a very easy entry point on the short side. Left-right combo, it opens positive the next day. But if it's trading off, as soon as it comes back down through this level, you want to short it. Because basically, you can see you had a bearish candle, a bearish left-right combo, and there's still selling the next day. That's a high probability setup that the sellers are in control. Now, this is why you want to learn your signals. There's your bearish trend kicker in NVIDIA. So, if you happen to have been long, which you shouldn't have with this close right here, but if you were like me in the old days when I was still learning candlesticks, I'm thinking, oh, man, this could turn right back up. Well, when they gapped it down below the previous day's close, they're pretty much telling you the sellers are definitely in control. If you'd been long, you should have been out of it immediately. If you were thinking of going short, your bearish uh, trend kicker, there's going to be more downside. So these are just pieces of information that give you a lot more uh, insight as to when you should be getting into something. Whoops. And when you should be getting out. Now, look at your hanging man confirmed. Sold off. Then observe the obvious. Today they took it up. And where did they take it up to? Right back to the 200. Where was a good place if you were short or thinking of going short? Right here. They go up here and fail and start back down. That's a high probability that not only are the sellers taking control, but they're doing it with a booster, uh, probably heading down to a, a much lower level, like a gap area. I was making good money on STX because of the bullish Harami gap up, then three white soldiers. But this is why we always say watch to see what happens once it gets to a major resistance level. Hanging man, hanging man, bearish confirmation. What this tell us? They weren't going through the 50-day moving average. When it opened lower the next day, if you've been long, should have closed out the position. With it closing below the uh, T line, you could start going short. So again, this comes back into that. Uh, I don't know why that does that. This is where I always say observe the obvious. Which way is this trend going? And once you identify which way the trend's going, what acts as a relevant factor? Keeps the downtrend going. Every time it comes up to the 50, it fails. Where do you think the next target is? Down here somewhere. Uh, yes, if I was going short, or if I was short, I wouldn't want to see it close back up above the T-line. Because what would that tell me about the strength of my downtrend? Not very strong. Now, if it opens lower, what do we got going on? Let's make this bigger again. If it opens lower, what do we got going on? Kind of a spinning top gap down. Now a bearish doji sandwich. Yep. Yeah. And where do you think the next target's going to be? Somewhere down in here. 
here was one that we were going to go long. Dang, this one doesn't come up on this chart. I don't know why that is. So here's another one where what's it telling you? This is why the Japanese rice traders say, let the market tell you what the market is doing. Bearish engulfing signal, wave one, wave two, wave three, the same magnitude as wave one. Bullish Harami, the buying or the selling has stopped. Where did it go? Couldn't get above the T line. Breaks back, back down below this level. Now what do we got going on? Wave one, wave two, going into wave three, which should have the same magnitude as this. Where's our uh, stop? Wouldn't want to see this close back up above the T line. When you recommend shorting a stock, I have to buy puts. They won't allow me allow me in my account. What strike price relative to a stock price and time frame would you use for a put? Mr. Candle, that's up to each individual. Now, I usually stay relatively close, like two weeks out or three weeks out. And I might pick something that is logical. Let's see, this closed at 87.66. I might pick out an 86 or an 80, you know, probably an 86 for two weeks out. The 34 is an exponential. So this is what we're going to be concentrating on, Mr. Candle. This is why we're doing the uh, trading strategies this uh, coming weekend. So that if you pick out four trading strategies that you like, which might be the best friend, the kicker signal, the fry pan bottom breakout, and the bobble pattern, I'm just picking out four. Then what we're going to be doing is, once you've identified them, now we analyze what is the upside potential based upon wave three or uh, the next resistance level, the next uh, gap area. And how long will it take to get there? So that's where we look at the different spreads or find the calls out. The first aspect of candle or of uh, option trading should be identifying the uh, trade that you want to be in, number one. And then number two, what makes the most sense math-wise? There's... There's a lot of people say, well, the stock's going up. I'm going to buy the calls. That may be the wor one of the worst trades to do based upon the magnitude of the move and the time frame you have to make those calls worthwhile. So that's why we want to analyze the math on every trade. Netties, your best friend selling. Now, if this opens lower tomorrow, what's it telling us? The 50 is not acting as uh, support. We could be heading all the way back down into this area. Yeah, depending on your risk tolerance. Now, uh, I usually try not to be within a week. Usually try to be two to three weeks out just to give me a little bit, a little bit of slump. Now, on a steady eddy. They, uh, we picked this one out. Um, nah, that's not a good one. Let's say on a steady eddy or a uh, 45 degree, that's going to have a completely different analysis. Uh, Gary, yes, that's all kind of, that's going to be automatic when you look at the bid ask. If the bid ask is you're looking at a uh, option that's bidding uh, 720, and they're asking 740. Yeah, that's probably a pretty active traded uh, option. If you're looking at an option where they're bidding 720 and they're asking 810, that's probably not going to be as active. So you have to go in with a different strategy if you really really like it. And that's another. That's all going to be part of the option uh, uh, weekend.
No, uh, Zig, this on the uh, 17th is going to be concentrating on the different trading strategies that fit your trading uh, program, your uh, nature, meaning let's say you can't get to the screen most of the day. You don't want to be doing very short-term trades. You really want to do swing trades. If it's something where you want to get into a position and hold it for two, three, four weeks, that's going to be a different strategy. If you're kind of a day trader, short-term swing trader, you might be looking at the best friend signals or the kicker signals. Now, one doesn't preempt another, and that's not the right word. One doesn't preclude the other. If you're a longer-term investor, you still look at the kicker signal because that hopefully is going to have a nice steady uptrend. So that's going to be the option strategy. Now, as far as the, what I just say, that's going to be the trading strategy for each person. Now, the option strategy we're going to go into a couple of weeks later to correspond with if you see a kicker signal and you can analyze what your upside potential is, what, what different strategies can you apply to that to make the best use of your, uh, your money for returns? Okay, so here's a, uh, there's our best friend signal. This is why we were recommending ResMed. But when it hit here in the overbought condition, we had to be a lot more attentive because what do we need it to do when it hits the 50? It needs to go through. The next day we see a bearish harami. We're closing out the position. Was it time to go short? And this chart... That's hard to say. Um, you're going to have separate segments depending on trading time horizons. Yes. Yes. So you might be a, looking at it as a safe trade where you're going to trade, uh, let's say, a spread pretty close uh, that expires in 10 days. Or might be a little bit more risky and you go out to where your spread expires in, let's say, 20 trading days, but you might buy a spread that was way above the uh, trading range, so you had very little money in it, but if the price moved as expected based upon the signal or pattern breakout, that wee little bit of money now expands dramatically, uh, so you had very little risk exposure, but huge upside potential. Yes, that's November 17th is the, uh, the different. Uh, so, uh, yes, first of all, it's geared to each person finding out what the best trading strategy is for them. And which one do they understand the best? Which ones do they recognize the best? So that they're not running after uh, every trade that looks good. They're going after the trades that they want to become very adept at. And then, once they have that knowledge, then it's going to be uh, kind of rolled over into, all right, if you're not buying the stock, which option strategy goes the best with that, that trade setup? I do is that crude oil trades. Yes, that's still that's yeah. All right, that's still uh, in this case it was an easy trade once it broke through the T line. You all you had to do is stay short until you see a buy signal, and it hasn't occurred yet. Now, if you're trading on an intraday basis, you're using the different patterns or signals uh, to catch the different little trends. Let's find something that's more dramatic, something like this, where uh, you can see where you can go short, and then you see where you start covering your short positions on the five-minute chart. 
We're we're on crude oil, yes. What do you need, Pat? When you say short, where's the buy signal? Oh, this was probably in the area of where I would have shorted crude oil. And you kind of had a little wedge type formation and it broke down through the T line. Where's the buy? There is no buy signal yet. We don't have a buy signal and a close above the T line. Right now it's trading right here, which wasn't a true. They closed the trading, I think, at 2.30, but they trade all the way to 5 o'clock. So here's what was happening on your five-minute chart, that it's still kind of trading in the same range that it that traded uh, uh, near the close today. All right, so here's another example. No, this this is a, okay. Here's another example. Very Sharami. Now yeah, they took it back up. J hook pattern about ready to break out, and they did a hanging man in the overbought area. So this should be telling you that there's not a lot of strength there to break out. This should be kind of a uh, an accumulative assessment that the uh, bears are starting to take control up here based upon the sell signals and where you are in the trend. Oh, I think we did that one, did we? So B's on, same scenario. Hanging man, shooting star, hanging man, closed below the T-line, stochastics in the overbought area, telling you it's time to be out of this trade. Whether it's time to go short, that would have been a good day to go short. And then ECYT. This one, same scenario. Barry Sharami didn't confirm. Now Hanging Man confirmed. So you're starting to see sell signals in the overbought area. So one of two things would have happened or should have happened. They broke out into a J-hook pattern. Or if you started seeing sell signals, this was a sell area double top. The cast is 12.33 slow, yes. So it has to be a buy signal and it trades above the T line, yes. Uh, go back, that's crude oil. That's not what I wanted. So today, you can see it moved up and down. There was it. Uh, somewhere today I made some good money on crude oil before the big drop, I think. No, that wasn't it. I can't even find it. Maybe i got to go to my 10-minute chart. Must have been right in here that uh, I made some good money. Closed it out because it didn't break out, waiting for it to come back up. And I was at the eye doctor when it did that, so I didn't have time to. You can go short, yes. If that's the best short tomorrow. Would I have sold on the Harami? Yes, if you've got, this is, we did a statistical weekend. Statistics say that if you have a big breakout move like this, either something good's happening or with a lot of short covering. I see double and broken charts. Uh oh. No. Um, Jim, can you show, show Phil how to refresh his screen? So statistics say if it opens lower the next day, close it out. You can always buy it back if it comes back up through this level. 
But the statistics say if it opens lower after a big price move, you don't buy back in until uh, you see the next uh, or see it come back up through that close. Now again, here's the trend kicker signal. You can see the rollover. You can see the Doji best friend. Then they brought it positive. But notice when they brought it positive, what type of signal did it do? That's not a signal. That's just an up day and a downtrend. Then the fact that they gapped it down below yesterday's or Friday's open told you the bears are still in control because you, you should expect a, a bearish trend kicker. ARNC. Observe the obvious, the 200 is acting as a resistance. Now you've got a doji gap down. Where's your next likely target? Down here somewhere. I don't know why that would be happening. You're seeing double broken charts. Bill, you must have been the same eye doctor I was at today. They got my new lenses in, which the bright one was broken or cracked, so that was the one I wanted to get fixed. But they went ahead and ordered the left one, too, and my left lens is almost like a teacup. It's so deep. So when we put the new uh, left lens in, I looked at the screen that has a little box with the letters uh, across it, and... All I saw with my left lens was two boxes with nothing in it. So that was how bad that, that left lens was. I know that was interesting stuff, but I thought it fit in with the... Uh, I can't wear soft lenses. I've got hard lenses because I've got a stigmatism, and the hard lens does a lot to... Uh, uh, voice is choppy, too. All right. Um my astigmatism needs the hard lens to kind of smooth over my, uh, yeah, I test the charts, just with candlestick charts. Yep. Now, I could read most of the, what am I doing? I'm here talking about, uh, was I looking at the right, here's a, uh, now, notice what you got going on here. Got up to the 50. Little spinning top. 2D star doji. Left right combo. This is one you definitely want to short on weakness tomorrow. Why is that? Because the left right combo is right up there as a top rank signal just like the best friend. Remember, anytime you see a signal or a combination of signal with the doji in it, it's going to, uh, it's going to be that much more, uh, what do I want to say, powerful as far as the uh, reversal move. Zoo. Look at the little kicker type signal after hitting the 50. Where's the next likely target? Right back down here to where it bottomed out before. Uh, same scenario. This is, again, anytime you see a sell signal, like a dark cloud, right smack dab at a resistance level, too much telling you the uptrend's over, and start thinking about going short. Because what's obvious about this? Obvious because everybody can see that it failed at the 50. They're starting to sell it off. And yard? Another one that failed with doji, doji, hanging man, spinning top, failure at the 50. We'd be heading back down to the bottom of this uh, support level. EXAS, gap down. If this one opens lower tomorrow, where's your first likely target? Fill in the gap. That gives you some running room. Next target right here. The fact that the, this market starts making lower highs and lower lows, every high ends with a sell signal, 
Does that not represent a sign of a bear market? Not necessarily a bear market. Let me finish one more, and we'll go back and analyze the uh, – did we do this one? ALGN. This is, again, why you want to kind of concentrate on kind of our evening star signal failure, almost like a little scoop pattern. So if this is wave one, wave three could be down quite a few points from here. All right, so, it's, yeah, the uh, fact, let me make this smaller. Again, observe the obvious. They had an uptrend, and it broke. This is why knowing what should happen after a doji is very important. Got a doji right here sitting right on the T-line. If this uptrend was going to remain in progress, what should we have expected? Bullish uh, confirmation. The fact that we could see it selling off, uh-oh, means... Okay, I sneeze. No, that's safe. Yeah, the, it, oh, mercy sakes. Broke this level. We're in a downtrend. So what becomes our analysis? Same as always. Where do we see a buy signal? Bullish Harami Doji. Where's our next target? The T-line. What did it do at the T-line? It sell signal. Back down here. Now when they bounced it back up above the uh, the T line, that told us we probably had some upside, but not a major powerful upside. Um, why was that? Because notice that this was not a reversal signal. This was just telling you there was going to be an up move. There's no bullish harami here, right? Or, oh, over here was a bullish harami. Doji type day. Remember what a harami is. It opens and closes inside the previous day's open and close. So if this was not a true reversal signal, what should we watch when we got to a, a first major resistance level? The, uh, let's see whether it was going to get up through that level. When they bounced it up, what was our red flag as we started out today? The fact that they gapped it up in an overbought condition. There was our evening star. Where's our next likely target? They could probably be taking it down here to the 200, at least. Yeah, uh, a bullish, it's a harami in the sense that it opened and closed. Even though the body is a little bit red, it's more of a doji type day, which means the body is not that significant. Now, if this had opened here and closed here, a bigger red body, that's still a harami, but they call that a homing pigeon. And it still needs bullish confirmation afterwards to tell you the, the selling has stopped. Wouldn't the gap over the T-line be a buy signal? Where was that? Right here, not a buy signal. It was telling you there was buying, and you could stay long. But the fact that they didn't do a reversal signal told you this wasn't as energetic as for being an identifiable uptrend. It was telling you they could be bouncing it up. And so once they got up here to the first major resistance level, remember what happens when it goes through a resistance level. They'll come back and test it as support. But when we know they're going to come back and test it as support, what's that telling us? We know it's heading down. Is it going to stay here at the uh, 50? That's where we have to watch for the next signals. Uh, yes, you want to see a green candle and a downtrend. If we're talking about this one, though, a doji harami, and where did it occur? Right off the 200-day moving average. That gave us a little bit more inkling that there was going to be at least a bounce here. But once it bounced up to the T-line, 
the one factor that you always have to keep in mind is when they bounced it up to the T line, what was everybody watching? They weren't watching the T line because nobody has the T line on their charts. We have it showing a little bit more descriptively because we do have the T line on our chart. If everybody, if nobody has the T line on our chart except a minuscule percentage of people, which we consider nobodies, not nobodies meaning us, but percentage-wise nobody, that means this was a natural resistance level. That's why we, why the T line is so effective uh, in conjunction with candlestick signals. Oh, uh, so back to somebody asking, is this a lower low? It could be. But we don't know that. So right now all we know is that more than likely they could be heading back down to the the uh, 200. And the failure of the uh, uh, the, the NASDAQ doing a bearish Harami, right smack dab at the 200 and confirming, tells us, yeah, we could be heading back to this level or this level. So right now, all you can assume with a sell signal, stochastics up toward the overbought area and a close below the T-line, the prospects are much greater that we're right now in a downtrend. So this is, again, the analysis. BSI had a bullish uh, morning star signal today, so you can watch that one. But the number one analysis that you want to do every morning is the pre-market futures are going to tell us pretty much which way the uh, – uh, how they're going to open the market. Then we have to watch to see what it does at technical levels that we know should be acting as support. As an – now a lot of room in the stochastics to move lower. Yes. Yes. So if they've just rolled over the stochastics, there, there's got to be something very dramatic to come bring the prices back up to move those stochastics to keep them up above they're from rolling over. Where, who do you use for pre-market futures? Chad? Most brokerage firms, you can type in, let's say, the YM, which is the uh, futures for uh, the Dow, or the QQQ, which is the uh, futures for the uh, NASDAQ, or if you've got a TV close by, you can turn on Fox Financial News or CNBC. Any of those will have a, a little bug down in the corner showing what the pre-market futures are indicating. Is there any indicator which shows the strength of a trend? Uh, yes, the signals that starting that trend. And that's what, that's what we're going to be concentrating on. The stronger the signal, the, the uh, shorter term you might be trading it, but that doesn't necessarily keep you out of Buying for your uh, swing trades or your longer term trades. Okay. With that, uh, if there's any more questions, general questions about candlesticks, if not, Jim, do the double line. And in 3.8 seconds, do the next double line and hold on for one second.
Okay, sorry about that. That makes it better. All right. All right. Oh, somebody was asking, uh, when we do the uh, different pattern and signal setups, yes, we're going to go through it step by step. And how do we identify if a kicker signal is actually a kicker signal? And how do we win and how do we get in it? So we're going to go through all of that detail because the whole point of all this is that you're going to try to learn uh, the different uh, signals and patterns, when to get in, how to get in, what makes them confirm the best, and what do you do to stay in them before coming back out. Um, once you start learning that type of uh, detail, then you don't have to be second-guessing. TW. Now, notice where you had kind of the selling occurring. Right about in here. So if this opens lower tomorrow, I try to take profits with the expectation it's coming back to the T-line. Just energy. That one went through the 200. Kind of a coming out of this fry pan bottom. If I was long, I would stay long, but I'd put a sell stop just below the low of today. Because if it comes back down through there, telling me they are selling off here at the 200-day area. J-hook type pattern on Fred. You just stay long on this, but you do have a uh, doji right about in this area. Use today as low as your stop. If they start selling it off coming down through that level, uh, they're, they're selling it off. Whiting didn't get started today. It had kind of a belt hold signal yesterday. So this is part of that entry strategy. Gapped open, I'd be ready to buy, but I'd wait to see if they're buying it. As you can see, they immediately started selling this one off, um, telling me, yep, you don't want to be buying it just yet. So there'd be two reasons not to jump in. They're immediately selling it off, and the market was selling off. So it wasn't giving you a good uh, framework for buying today. Church, you can be buying this one, the J-hook pattern. Now, this is a bullish Harami. Notice it opened above the previous day's close and closed below the previous day's open. And where did it do it? Right smack dab on the T-line. That becomes uh, very uh, informational. EHS, another one where you can stay long. If I was long, I wouldn't want to see this close back below the 50. That would put you right back into the trading range when it should be breaking out. The VIX, you can buy this one, especially if it opens positive tomorrow. Notice your doji gap up. Michaels, just stay long, but notice you've got a doji. Doji, I'd have a sell stop down here someplace. It shouldn't start trading lower. AUPH. Shouldn't be in this one. There's just nothing on this one that's enticing. DAL stays short. There's your bearish Harami telling you the buying has stopped. Where do you think the first target was? Right here. When could you start buying? When you saw the next buy signal. I'd be sh If you were short, stay short. There's your next likely target. Lab D, whoops, you can stay long on this one. And SQQQ, is that the short? You can stay long on this one. Again, your Doji Harami, you're right smack dab on the 50, followed by a gap up. Now you want to see if they can get through the 200-day moving average. And GLBS. Bullish Harami off the 34. Get rid of that. Next target should be this area right here. To kind of see if you're going to have a a, uh, a J hook pattern breakout. 
and Yelp. These are toughies. If, uh, yeah, uh, this is, uh, this would have had me out just based on the fact that it hit the 50 and sold out doing an evening star signal. That was telling me they weren't going up through. If you held on, and these are toughies. They bounce. You just have to watch to see where uh, the selling comes back into the bounce. On Agra, morning star signal. That's a strong signal, especially for a day like today. BRKS, stay short. Notice you closed below this level. Oops, you may have touched this level, but your stochastics are still heading down. I'd stay short on this one. Rollins, there's your bearish Harami. Opened lower. Where do you think the first target was going to be? The T-line. Now, if you are thinking of going short, watch to see what it does right here. But uh, if you did stay long, it has to open positive tomorrow to stay in it. Medtronics. 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 Barry Sharami confirmation. You can get ready to short this one with the idea you're in a downtrending channel if it opens lower tomorrow. Great Lakes Dredge and Dock. Well, there's your kicker signal. Is this the one? Uh, I know there's one that goes to Brazil or those places, and they pull up thousand-year-old uh, logs from out of the mud and use those for building material or furniture. So, GLDD, you stay long. Now, you're in the overbought condition. Where's your safety stop? Right here. It shouldn't come back down through that level. LCI, getting a little bit testy up here with the uh, doji. If you bought this as it came back up through, you should have closed it out here. It's not a good chart right now. You need to see see more strength. If this opened lower tomorrow, you definitely should be out of it. American Airlines still has to get through the 50. You still have a T-line crunch in progress. And XOP, stay short. Sell signal, bearish engulfing. Oh, that's the uh, oil, gas and oil spider. Yep, you stay short. And Twillo, another one. When it opened lower or traded lower today, there was your bearish Harami. Again, this is one where if they close below this level, you close it out and you wait for it to come back up through that level. Burlington, ah, that's a toughie. If, ah, if, if, this one has to open positive. If you're long to do the J hook, if it opens lower, you close it out immediately. And LTHM, you got the big uh, uh, bearish spinning top. If this opens lower tomorrow, you close it out. Alta, there's your belt hold, which is also uh, telling you they've taken out some sellers. You stay long on this. If I was long right now, I'd probably have my safety stop right here. They shouldn't come back down through that level. Mafia, just stay long as long as it stays in this 45 degree. A B M D. A B M D. Yep. 
Should have been out on the gap down. You can think about going short on this one. It's still not a very pretty chart, but probably your first target is back to the 300 level. Percentage-wise, it might not be. Yeah, stay short. Didn't read far enough. Stay in it. That's just great. Roku, stay short after the kicker signal. ACIA, this one, when it opened lower, where do you think the first target was going to be? The T-line. If this opens lower tomorrow, you can expect it now to come back to the 50. CDNA, eh, that's not a pretty chart at all. I'd be someplace else. Apple. Almost got to the 200. If you were short, you stay short. And the failure here at the uh, at the T line broke through the recent load today. We should expect more downside. You got to watch to see. And you know everybody's watching to see what it's going to do here at the 200. So yeah, you got to watch to see what it does at that level. NTWK, big bearish in golfing. Watch to see what it does when it gets to the 50. VGR, vector. What's your vector, Victor? Roger, Roger. I can see airplane. VGR, more than likely, is coming back to test. The 50. Now I say test the 50 because notice what the signal it did today. It didn't do a signal. It just told you it was selling off. So I'd watch to see what it does here at the 50. Boeing. Oh uh, boy. I probably wouldn't short Boeing just because of the lack of trajectory on this one. If you're going to short it, it's on the basis that you think it's at least coming back to the 200, which may not be significant enough to short. And crude oil, just stay short until you see a buy signal. However, on this chart, you've got a bearish engulfing in the oversold area. That's usually an indication that that's the last gas selling. Start looking for a buy signal. And S-Fix, stay short. Kind of a bearish doji sandwich. I would suspect your first target is right here, see if it holds that level. Okay, I would suspect we're going to still have some sluggish trading, not so much on here, but over here, you've got a little bit of an indication that you might have a wedge formation setting up, meaning it's not going anywhere with great enthusiasm one way or the other. Okay, so with that, again, I'm getting some private messages. The uh, weekend training is so that you can decipher which trade setups are going to be the easiest ones or the trading patterns, the easiest ones for you to recognize and take advantage of for the time frame of what you want to trade. And then once you start getting that in your head, about two or three weeks later, we're going to be doing another weekend. It's probably going to be a full weekend where we're going to be looking at all the different trading strategies that you can use in options, whether it's the iron condor or the the butterfly or the uh, uh, spreads. And then we'll apply those to different uh, candlestick patterns to make that which, to show which ones work most effectively for uh uh, or the type of pattern that's setting up on the candlestick. It will be recorded, yes. Now, the first day uh, will be kind of a, a uh, going through the different trading strategies. And then the, probably late 
the first day and probably into the second day, we will probably be doing what, how you figure out the math, how you figure out what your targets are, and which trading strategies would work the best for that uh, signal or pattern. Uh, YS, yes, you should be getting that in the morning comments. So again, this is going to be one of those comprehensive, uh, what is the total duration? Oh boy. I am, I don't know. I would probably say, uh, six hours a day at least. Um, yeah, it's probably too long to be a one day. It's probably going to be pretty close to two full days. And again, these are going to be sessions where yeah, don't don't let them go. Um, where you uh, you can ask questions. This is where we kind of go through step by step, so that uh, it's 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 not only to show you what is the best strategies but you understand the strategies, so you can be looking at them on your own uh, anytime you see your, the trades that you like are setting up. All right, everybody. And I think it's going to be cold and dreary this coming weekend, so that's a good day to stay in. And uh, how was I going to say it? This would be, this would be a good day to... I'm going to stay in my pajamas, and you should do the same. But how you get into my pajamas, I don't know. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.